we pray for our GS, more of your power, more of your grace and anointing and unction. You continue to bestow upon his life for the world evangelization in Jesus' name. We pray for Nigeria as a nation that, Lord, you will take over the governance of this nation so that, Lord, this nation will enjoy all the provision you have given us in Jesus' name. We pray for the, for the church, that this church, deeper Christian life ministry, will continue to stand in the truth, in sound doctrine, and nothing will derail us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. And this morning, let your blessing from heaven, oh God, flow into every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered our prayers, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We welcome every one of us to the service today in Jesus' name. This is Deeper Life Bible Church headquarters, Bagada, Lagos. Today's service brings together the following old districts, namely Festac, Isolo, Lagos Island, Mushi, Orile, Oshodi, and Yaba. It is the joy of the church to have new people in our midst today. Therefore, if today is your first time here, could you please raise up your hand wherever you are seated? Thank you very much. Please kindly take a little step by standing up for recognition and for greetings from the church. Kindly please stand up. Thank you. God, be, God bless you. You are welcome here in Jesus' name. The church and the entire congregation here greets you. Our general superintendent, our Father in the Lord, in this church is happy that you are here today. And he bids me tell you to keep on coming. And as you continue to come, the blessing that God has given unto us through his ministry, you also receive in Jesus' name. Our ushers are very close to you. They will give you a package. Please collect it from them. And there's a slip inside the package. Please supply the information required therein, and please be seated. After the service, please come to the right hand of right side, right side of my hand, right hand of my right side of my hand here, and then please sit there. The ushers will meet you to have some time with you. Announcement: Three times every week, we have the following meetings in this church which hold in our various districts and locations. Sunday worship service. Every Sunday, we have our Sunday worship service at 7.45 a.m. in our various districts. Where we come from, it is always a refreshing time. House Caring Fellowship. On Sunday evenings, we meet in smaller units in what we call the Home Caring Fellowship. Every member of the church is expected to be a member of the Home Caring Fellowship near his or her house and participate effectively. The children, youths, and adults have their separate house fellowships. The time of fellowship is 4 p.m. for the children and youths. While for the YPF, the ad young adults and the, youth and the adults, the time is 5 p.m. Monday Bible study. Every Monday, we have our systematic and expository Bible study personally taken by our general superintendent of this church. Then the Bible study starts at 5.45 p.m. Tomorrow is another day. Brethren from Old Bagada, Ketu, Shomolu, and Adimosho, we meet here tomorrow for their own Bible study, while the rest of us will meet at our various districts and location churches for the Bible study. Thursday revival and evangelism training service. Every Thursday, we have our revival and evangelism training service. And every third Thursday of the month, we have the power night. We should invite our neighbors, friends, colleagues, and relations including the sick, the lame, and the blind, the oppressed, and those with diverse kinds of diseases and ailments. 
The Saturday's workers' meeting hold in all our groups at 3.30 p.m. every Saturday. The Tuesday leadership development normally holds in all our old districts at 5.15 p.m. every Tuesday. However, next Tuesday, July 23rd, the meeting we hold in our various groups to enable us to do proper planning and preparation for the Kumasi Crusade. Global Crusade with Kumui, GCK. This month's edition of our Global Crusade with the theme, Full Salvation and Total Healing Through Christ, comes up from Thursday 25th to Tuesday 30th of July 2024. The ministers, church, workers, and professional conference with the theme, Renewal for Latter-day Revival, will be on 26th, 29th, and 30th of July, respectively. 2024. All our workers, workers in training, and professionals are to attend the conference in a various group of districts at 8 a.m. on each day of the conference. The Impact Academy for Teenagers, campus students, corps members, and young adults with the theme Arise, Ready to Change Your World will come up on Saturday, 27th July. 2024. The program starts at 8 a.m. Today, we shall be joining, uh, we shall be going out for intensive publicity for this program as arranged in our various groups and districts. And these have been made available for use. We should also continue to intensify our prayers. God bless you.
For the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Revelation of St. John the Divine The Revelation of St. John the Divine Revelation 22 Revelation 22 And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things, and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow-servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, 
worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The Gospel According to St. Matthew The Gospel According to St. Matthew Matthew 1 Matthew 1 The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. And Judas begat Phares and Zerah of Thamar, and Phares begat Ezram, and Ezram begat Aram. And Aram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Neasson, and Neasson begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz of Rechab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias, and Solomon begat Reboam, and Reboam begat Abiah, and Abiah begat Asa, and Asa begat Josaphat, and Josaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias, and Ozias begat Joatham, and Joatham begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Ezekias, and Ezekias begat Manasses, and Manasses begat Amon, and Amon begat Josias, and Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren, about the time they were carried away to Babylon. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Zorobabel, and Zerubbabel begat Abiad, and Abiad begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Achim, and Achim begat Eliad, and Eliad begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Matthan, and Matthan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are fourteen generations, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are fourteen generations, and from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are fourteen generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold! A virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. 
Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen. I need to tell the world how glorious things are happening in Ghana. In the rich and vibrant land of Mother Ghana, where the heritage of the Ashanti Kingdom shines brightly. An extraordinary event is about to unfold. Heaven is loaded to pour something down upon you. Live in Babayara Sports Stadium, Kumasi, Ghana, from the 25th to 30th, July 2024, at 1600 hours GMT daily. And the Lord is saying, whatever you choose, I give to you. Isn't that wonderful? That God doesn't predestinate you to evil. Ministers, professionals, and church workers. This is a clarion call to stir up a soul-saving revival in every space and environment. Come get the needed tools for timeless impact in ministry. Join us this July at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Great Hall, Kumasi, Ghana, on the 26th, 29th, and 30th at 0700 hours GMT daily. The three-in-one GCK crusade is for everyone old and young and with this mandate impact academy for youth young adults and young professionals that will be live at barbara sports stadium pastor dr wf kumui is set to equip the teenagers campus students core members and young adults for great exploits as they arise on saturday 27 july 2024 get ready for a powerful musical experience with jeff dayor <laughs> He leads us in worship and opens the gates of heaven for an outpouring of God's blessings and favor. By his stripes, I am healed. He healed them all. He saved them all. Come, be a part of these experiences. Komashi Ghana. Jesus is here.
believe that this life with its great mysteries surely someday will come to an end and oh but fate will conquer the darkness and death and will lead at last to my friend I believe Mount Calvary, yes we do, I believe whatever the cause, and when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to the old. That the Christ who was slain on the cross has the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely. I know life is mine. That is why. We now bring you 
choir ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world. The God that I serve cannot fail me. And I know that He's always around. When the time comes to stand, what it taught me. No better foundation can be found. That's the kind of God that I serve. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless everyone today in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for our worship service. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. And thank you, Lord, for the promise that cannot fail, will not fail, that when we come before you, that Jesus Christ, our Lord, is with us. We're praying, Lord, today. Grant us understanding 
in your word in Jesus name Amen. and we pray as we understand what you teach what you reveal we're asking Lord that the grace the power the spiritual strength to obey your word your grant to everyone in Jesus name Amen. help us Lord to move forward in the strength of the Lord in the power and the knowledge and the light of the Holy Ghost in every life in Jesus name Amen. we thank you because we know you have answered in Jesus name we pray God bless you. you can see that today we're coming to Numbers chapter 31. What a great, great chapter. We're reading from verses 7 and 8. And they watched against the Midianites as the Lord commanded Moses. And they slew all the males. Would you please notice? It says, the waged war, they fought against the Midianites. And then it says, as the Lord commanded Moses. Always, always, when a believer does anything, when a family does anything, when a whole congregation does anything, it ought to be as the Lord commanded whether it's Old Testament, New Testament, Old Covenant, or New Covenant, everything a Bible believer does, everything a child of God does, everything a local church does, everything a denomination, the whole church, national, the whole church, worldwide, everything we do must be as the Lord commanded whatever we do, which the Lord has not commanded, is punishable by the Lord. Because when you in the place of God, we're taking over the right, the authority that belongs to the Almighty God. And when we do that, anytime, Old Testament, New Testament, anytime, any dispensation, whenever, anyone, any individual usurps the place, the authority of God, he will be punished. Now, we look at 1 Samuel chapter 25, and we're looking at verse 28. 1 Samuel chapter 25, verse 28. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord, he's talking about David, my Lord, the Lord, that's the Almighty, will certainly make my Lord a sure house. Why? Because the Lord God in heaven will make my Lord, King David, a sure house because my Lord fighteth the battle of the Lord. Because the Lord, my Lord, fighted the battle of the Lord. And evil has not been found in thee all thy days. Fight, but make sure that the evil, no evil, is found in your life. Any day, any time, any dispensation, Old Testament or New Testament, he calls us to fight the battle of the Lord without allowing evil in our heart, evil on our tongue, evil in our hand, evil in anything we do at any time. Then, if there's no evil, then if there is no sin, then if we are united with God, connected with God, and evil is absent, we can go ahead now, fight the battles of the Lord. Today we're talking about faithfully fighting the battles of the Lord. Always have that in mind. 
that's your fight, but it must be the battle of the Lord. Can I clear it up for you? Adam and Eve were husband and wife. The first couple that lived on earth, Eve did something that caused Adam and herself to be driven out of the garden. But Adam did not fight Eve because the Lord did not command him to fight Eve for what had happened if Adam had fought Eve, husband fighting the wife, whatever, whatever, whatever might have happened, that will not be the battle of the Lord. Cain and Abel, children in the same family. Look at what Cain eventually did. But Abel will not fight because God had not commanded, revealed to Abel. Look at what Cain is planning, fighting. If God has not commanded it, it's not the battle of the Lord. Children of the same parents, children in the family of God, children, members of the church of the living God, were children of the same father. If we fight one another, understand that is not the battle of the Lord. The children of Israel, chiding, angry, and all that against Moses. God did not command them that. So if they chided Moses, if they fought against Moses, they were fighting a punishable fight because God had not commanded it. That's not the battle of the Lord. And also, a Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, members of the Levite family, if they fought Moses, that's not the battle of the Lord. They will be punished because they're fighting a fight which is not of God. The disciples arguing among themselves, who is greater? Who is the greatest? And this one rising up and wanting to take this one, whether it's Peter or James or John, any one of the disciples of Christ, saying they read something in the Bible, they are going to take laws into their hands if they fought one another when Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. If they went against that and were fighting among the disciples, they will be punished by God because that kind of fight is not the battle of the Lord. Here comes Peter and Paul. And Peter had done something that Paul saw that this is not right. Your eating with the Gentiles, and now people came from Jerusalem. And look at what you are doing. That was not right. And so Paul corrected him, rebuked him. This is not right. Now, after that rebuke, if Peter, by his position as a senior apostle, if he fought one way or the other against Paul, that's not the battle of the Lord because God has not commanded that. That when anyone, Peter or James or any apostle or any pastor is corrected and rebuked, that the fellow will, will fight back. Any fight, any contention that God has not commanded, that is not the battle of the Lord. And so, we need to have that background as we look at the message today, faithfully fighting the battles of the Lord. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the discernment and directives for believers on battles. Number two, the deeds and destiny of Balaam, the backslider. Number three, the devotion 
and destination of Bible believers. Let's come to point number one. Point number one, the discernment and directives for believers on battles. What to have directives from the Lord. If we're going to fight at all, why? Because the mandate from our Savior, the mandate from our Messiah, the mandate from the Mediator is that blessed are the poor in spirit because theirs is the kingdom of God. We come into the kingdom and he says the normal life in the kingdom is not the life of fighting of contention. Blessed are the poor in spirit we we'll bend low, we we'll bend on our knees, we we'll respect God, honor God, and we we'll respect His word. Blessed are they that mourn. If we have lost spiritual opportunity, if we have lost our, the evidence of salvation, what are we to do? Are we to, you know, get angry against everyone. No, we mourn. And blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted when you have done something wrong, when you've lost an opportunity, when you've lost a privilege. Yes, we're sorrowful, but we don't take it on anybody. We don't fight with anybody. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And then... Blessed are the meek. After we've lost this, we mourned, we cried, we prayed to the Lord. He forgives us. Our mandate is to be meek. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And then after that, with all we inherit, with all the answers to our prayers, Jesus said, Blessed are they that thirst. A morning, but I did a thirst and hunger after righteousness. We're not thirsty for position. We're not eager for any kind of exaltation. Blessed are the people that will thirst and hunger after righteousness. And then after that, we have any challenge. We're put in a good position. Blessed are the people that are merciful, merciful. We're not, uh, you know, now I get the power, now I get the position, now I get the authority. I'm going to fight so and so. No, blessed are those people who are merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And then it says, blessed are the pure in heart. Who are pure in heart? We're not looking for somebody to fight. We're not looking for somebody to trample down. We're not looking for even an offender. We're looking for them to, you know, trample apart. Because were it not for the grace of God, my brother, I would have been like that other person. My sister, without the grace of God, you would have been like that other person. So, even after the Lord has been merciful to you, you show mercy and blessed are the, are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And then, what if I'm sanctified now, I'm purified now, and I'm now a preacher, a pastor, what do I do? Because now I'm fighting for the... Hold on. Blessed are... The peacemakers. That's our mandate. What will be peacemakers? And so we don't read any part of the scripture and say, okay, I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight. You, it's a lost battle. Because if you are like that, you are going to have the punishment of the Lord upon your life. Blessed are the uh, peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. What if I'm a peacemaker and the people, they contend with me? That's all right, that's all right. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Because that's how 
the prophets that were before you in the old covenant that's how they were persecuted so your mind your heart your desire your disposition is that if you are persecuted in fact you say rejoice because great is your reward in heaven then he says you are the salt of the earth isn't it and salt does not fight with all the other ingredients in our soul. Blessed are we then, if we understand the mandate for the believer, and if we understand the commandment for the believer, if there's anything to fight about at all, any, anything to fight, not anyone, you're not fighting, you're not wrestling with flesh and blood. If there is anything to settle at all, the Lord will tell us as he commanded Moses that he should instruct the children of Israel and they'll fight and contend against the Midianites. Not against fellow believers, not against the other tribes of Israel, not against your wife, not against your husband, not against anyone. Because a mandate is very clear. So then, we need discernment and we need directives for believers on battle. Look at three things here. Number one, divine directive for old Moses against lustful Midianites. Number two, definite discipline of offending ministers and lawless members number three decisively dealing with own members what does that mean our own members my hand my disposition my eyes my ears my intelligence everything i have that operates, that works. Those are my members. I need to decisively deal with my own members in my body and with my loose manners. That the great fight the Lord has called us to, that we fight members of our body that may want to lead us astray and make us deal and make us act in a way that is not of God. And if there's any manner I have that God points out that's loose, that's not firm. You're not firm on yourself. You're not in control of your temper. You're not in control of your life. Of, you know, as you go from day to day, and that's what I'm to deal with. Decisively dealing with our own members in our body and our loose manners look at number one number one divine directives for old moses against lustful midianites numbers chapter 31 we're looking at verse one and the lord spake unto moses saying the lord spake unto Moses saying look at verse 2 now avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites afterward Moses this is the last assignment I'm giving you you're not 120 years of age actually Moses you got been older than 120 before dying were it not for the anger at that place where you struck the rock twice and water came out and you did not sanctify me honor me actually moses you shouldn't be dying now but because of that incident that's why you're dying now but as he gets you to heaven after watch thou shalt be gathered unto thy people who knows Moses could have been 130 140 
if he had gone into the land of Canaan and had fought the battle of the Lord appropriately and handed over the land of Canaan unto the um, unto the children of Israel he could have been more than 120 years of age but in any case I've shown you the land you'll get to the land but settle this issue and avenge avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites that teaches us something that really our lives can be prolonged if we are very careful that we are not fighting our own battle. We are not getting angry because of something done against us. We are peaceful. We are meek. And we are peacemaking. We could go beyond 80, beyond 90, beyond 100 until we have done the initial thing that God proclaimed we will do. But now, Moses, do this last one, and then you'll be gathered unto thy people. When you say to avenge the Midianites, what happened? Numbers chapter 25, reading from verse 1. In Numbers chapter 25, verse 1, an Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit Adam with the daughters of Moab. Verse 2. In verse 2 it says, And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down, bowed down, bowed down to their idols to their gods. Then in verse 3, in verse 3 it says, And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun. You see the consequence? They had gone into unequal yoke. They had gone into immorality, idolatry, evil, sinful things with the Midianites because Balaam could not get to cursing and destroying the children of Israel as Balak wanted him to. And he still wanted the money. And because he still wanted the money, he counseled Balak to release the women of Midian unto them. And those people, they could conquer cities, or vision, but they couldn't conquer, they are lost. And so the New Testament tells us 24,000 people of Israel died under the judgment of God. And so now, because of that, he wanted, God wanted the Midianites to pay for what they had done and so you look at verse 5 here in verse 5 it says and Moses said unto the judges of Israel slay ye every one his men that's commandment of God remember everything that we do that touches the life of another person must be by the express command of the Lord and it says, all the men that were joined unto Baal Look at verse 6. In verse 6, it says, And behold, one of the children of Israel, while the nation was mourning, 
why they were sorrowful because of that kind of immoral attachment to the Moabites and the Midianites. While that was going on, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren. He was not hiding this now. A Midianitish, a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping. They were mourning before the dawn of the tabernacle of the congregation. Well, Phinehas rose up and dealt with that so that sin will be taken away from the midst of the children of God. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and reading from verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, but they were overthrown in the wilderness. Verse 6. In verse 6, now, these things were our examples to the intent for the purpose that we should not lost after evil things that they also lost it. Verse 7. In verse 7, <clears throat> neither be ye idolaters, as was some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Then in verse 8, in verse 8, neither let us commit fornication, neither let us commit adultery, neither let us uh, do anything, neither do anything unclean, anything unclean with your hand. Anything unclean with your eyes. Anything unclean with any part of your body. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed. And they fell in one day. Three and twenty thousand. And that's referring back to what happened in Numbers chapter 25. That those uh, Israelites joined themselves with, um, you know, those ladies that uh, Balaam introduced, Balak introduced to them from the advice and counsel of Balaam. It says in Jude, Judges rather, in Judges chapter 8, we're reading from verse 1, Judges chapter 8, reading from verse 1. And the men of Ephraim said unto him, Why hast thou served us thus? What thou, that thou caused us not when thou wentest to the Midianites? And they chide, and they did chide with him. He's talking about Gideon and the people. Again, the Lord had called Gideon to fight against the Midianites, and the Lord told him why. He first of all wanted to withdraw, saying, I'm the least in my family. I don't have the strength. How can I do this? How can I do this? But the Lord said, Go in those in this thy strength, thou man of valor. And so, Eventually he went, look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over, over, uh, the, over the land. And then it says, And the 300 men that were with him faint, yet pursuing them. Again, because Gideon was called, to do this, he pursued what he was to do with all his strength and with all the energy that he had faith, yet they pursued. But look at this, look at verse 24 of that same chapter. In verse 24, 
And Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you that ye would give me every man the earrings of his prey, for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites. Look at verse 25. In verse 25, and they answered, We will willingly give them. And they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. Verse 26. In verse 26, and the weight of the golden earrings that he requested was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, besides the ornaments and the colors and, and purple raiment that was on the kings of Midian and beside the chains that were about their camels next. Verse 27. In verse 27, and Gideon made an effort thereof and put it in his city, even in Ophrah, and all Israel went thither a warring after, after it. Then it says, which thing became a snare unto Gideon and to his house. You get the point? He conquered the Midianites. He could not conquer his own inordinate desire. He conquered the Midianites. He could not conquer the greater enemy within the propensity to idolatry, the propensity and leaning towards evil, towards sinfulness. So a person might fight the Midianites, might appear to overcome the Midianites, but inside him, not having the power, not having the strength, not having the grace to conquer the greater Midian inside him. Gideon fought, he pursued, without fainting. He fainted, but he went on. And yet, at the end of the day, that thing that he did after conquering the Midianites became a snare to him and a snare to the whole of the children of Israel. My brother, my sister, I want to ask you, you conquer in your area of work, area of your calling, area of defeating the outside enemy, vigilant, and then you are strong and you are quite dedicated. And we see the victory you win over the outside Midianites for the lost in you, the propensity in you, and the greed in you, and the sin inside you that you should conquer before you can get to heaven, that one conquers you. What's the use? You conquer Midianites and that internal thing that you worship, covetousness, money that becomes an idol. You cannot conquer that. It's of no use. Look at number two. Number two, we're looking at definite discipline of offending ministers and lawless members. I'm sure you remember that God calls us to be ministers in the kingdom of God. He's watching over everything we do. And if in that ministry, in that calling, you are not conquering everything that comes 
as temptation or trial, but outwardly you are conquering, inwardly you're defeated, you become an offending minister. And if you're a member of the church, and you just do as if you have never heard any message on holiness, your art, your lay, as if you had never heard the message of sanctification. And everything you do, everywhere you go, sanctification does not come in. Holiness does not come in. Purity of heart and life does not come in. You just live. After all, you've mastered the techniques outwardly. And the techniques you have mastered makes you outwardly conquering. But internally, you are lawless. It says there's punishment for those people except you bring definite discipline upon yourself. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 12, it says now, the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. They knew not the Lord. Look at uh, verse 22. In verse 22, now, Eli was very old. <laughs> Don't misinterpret the word of God. He wasn't as old as Moses yet. He was in his 90s. He's not even rich, 100. And it says Eli was very old. <laughs> That's what he thought about himself. I'm very old now. It's what you tell yourself you believe. I cannot stand like I used to stand. I'm very old. That's what you tell yourself. I cannot correct these members. Now I'm very old, Eli. If there's any time, you should be able to stand for righteousness. It's when you are very near the grave and when you're very near the other side of life, going to heaven. If there's any time, you should be able to correct able to put things in place, able to set things in order, is when you are thinking, I might soon be leaving. Then do it now. You don't have too much time left. But you know, he thought, I'm old now. I depend on these sons. Give me this and give me that. Take care of me. Without them, I'll be lonely. God is with you, you are lonely. The word of God is with you. You are lonely. The opportunity to pray is with you. And you are lonely. And the chance to stand on the promises of God that can never fail. All those promises are with you. And you are lonely. You know, the, the man turned the whole faith upside down. And so Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women. Can you think about that? They lay with the women that assembled at the door of the, of the tabernacle, of the congregation. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, and he said unto them, Why do ye do such things? Eli. Go further. Don't just ask them, why do you do all these things? You see, I'm old, very old. I don't have the stamina. I don't have the background. I don't have the decision-making faculty like I used to do, and you're doing this at this time. Why do ye such things? For I hear, ah, you're hearing? I hear of you, of your evil dealings by all these people. You are reporting to him, Eli, high priest, your sons have polluted the sacrifice of the Lord, and your sons are actually now, uh, you know, we hear of those who commit adultery in the private, fornication in the private, but your sons, they do it openly. They, you know, we see them. Because they do it right in the tabernacle. And old Eli, so old now, 
that she couldn't say anything more than children why do i hear this about you verse 24 in verse 24 nay there's something between verse 23 and verse 24 after eli spoke to them they argued you know us now daddy do you believe that all those reports do you believe that no way innocent that's why he now replied them nay my sons for it is no good report that i hear ye make the lord's people to transgress look at verse, verse, verse 25 in verse 25 if one man sin against another the judge shall judge him but if a man sin against the lord who shall entreat for him because notwithstanding it says they hearken not unto the voice of their father because the lord was slay them look at verse 30. in verse 30, it says wherefore the lord god of israel says i said indeed i said in the past i promise you in the past that thy house and thy the house of thy father should walk before me forever 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 but now the lord says tell me uh -uh, you need a microphone i said everybody tell me be it far from me be it from for me <laughs> there are people that take the work of god with the erroneous idea of eternal security we're there we're there we're there forever there are people that take opportunities and privileges as this is eternal security my work my assignment in the kingdom of god standing forever god said indeed i told you and i told the house of your father that you'll be priests before me forever but because you exalt your sons above me because you couldn't fight the midianite under your eyes under your nose in your, under your roof because of that and you exalt your sons above me that but far from me that's why we have to have definite discipline on our own members when you i don't mean members of the church your own member when your heart is appearing weak when your back and your backbone is not standing straight anymore when you're telling yourself i'm very old i can no more honestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints when you are telling yourself my people are not like isaac that abraham will say lie down on the wood and isaac will see the knife in his hand <laughs> this man is going to is going to obey god at the expense of my life old man i'll push him off and take the knife from him if he does if he's not careful i'll use the knife on him when you're thinking uh, you know i'm old now all this isaac lay on the altar all these people doing this we do it that i cannot do that now because i'm old before you get to heaven if you ever get there a position a privilege be taken away from you because you honor your own convenience above me you honor your own feeling about me and you honor your own personality i don't want to suffer by correcting anybody anymore because of that you're old you soon leave but where you leave to we cannot tell but now it's not just the mini the the minister god also expects discipline definite discipline 
personal discipline on lawless members. It tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, we're looking at verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. You know, people outside, people in the marketplace, they know. They know what goes on inside every church, and there's gossip in the marketplace outside. They say, oh, that church, they used to stand on holiness, but as many years ago, they are not like that anymore. They, they, they say it outside. They say, those people, if their pastor said, oh, they just go ahead and obey, they don't argue. They don't, uh, you know, once the apostle says this, they believe he has heard from the Lord 100%. They just run. But now they say, that judge, what a pity for them. The man is still alive, but they are no more like that now.